Mm. So let's go ahead and, and introduce Mr. Chris. So Christopher Sorrentino has been working with me probably about two years now. He started on telesales, had some experience in the business of telesales, but not in insurance, started with final expense with me. Uh, right away, did very, very well, had ups and downs like we all do, and uh, really found a stride, what, Chris, maybe six, nine months after he got started. I think it's yeah, I would say it's a good call yeah. about 10 months. Yeah. Best week in the business, what, 15, 20,000 in AP? I think maybe even 21,000, right? It was more than that, actually. Yeah. It was more than that. Okay. How much was it? I know you. It was, it, it was, a little, it was over 32,000. In so one week? In one week, yes. Oh, man, that is sick. Like, guys, if you can do that in one month, I'm like impressed. So, Chris did that in one week. What was your best month? Uh, well, that, that month was my best month. So, okay, well, I don't. You- Remember? No, I don't remember. I just remember that one week, but obviously you could do the math. I, 50,000 probably. Give yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. More than that. Okay. <laughs> so Chris knows what he's doing. He's been in the business uh, for a while working with me. He now trains my agents who are interested in the career side of the business. So he's seen both sides as an agent who's been very successful, but also as a manager who helps train agents, get them up and running and uh, get them out there to try to be successful. And that's kind of where the, the perspective today is going to be really interesting is, is that I brought Chris on here to really not sugarcoat things, but to keep it real, to give you guys a real background on what it takes to be successful and um, you know why agents fail out of telesales. Uh, so um, Chris, yes, what would you like to explain a little bit more about yourself? You want to start anywhere in particular? Or you want to pick back up with a kind of talking the game of telesales and what agents need to be aware of well i mean i once again just to give you a little bit of background i wasn't always in sales i came and went uh here and there but i did start when i was a teenager working for a newspaper company doing advertising back in the day you know selling advertising over the phone to have them put their company's name in our newspaper and you know generate money so i did i have a little extra um couple of years under my belt because of that, where I started with telesales, but ultimately insurance, life insurance telesales is a little different than your normal industry doing, working over the phone, just like, you know. So tell us why you would say that. What's different about selling, again, life insurance, final expense. What have you found out to be different than whatever it was you've done in the past? Well, with life insurance, Obviously, we know they could cancel at any time and you would get something called a chargeback. Charge so back. it's a little bit, what? yes. Oh, I'm very familiar with this saying. <laughs> I'm one of the best at it, folks. <laughs> um, with that being said, is it's a little bit different of a sale over the phone. Remember, they are older people, so you do have to talk differently to them. You have to be a little bit slower with them, uh, sec- essentially. Uh but what I'm saying is life insurance, Dave must have said this millions of times, it's not a tangible item. So your back's up against the wall with that already, that they can't use it while they're alive for the most part. And then you add the phone to the equation, which phone sales in general, no matter what industry, is hard enough. Um, and then you add final expense life insurance, which makes it even harder, folks. Um, with that being said, I would say it like this. You would have you have to work harder doing telesales than you would face to face on a normal basis to make the same amount of money. It will cost you more money for the most part. There's always exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, it will cost you more money to be a telesales agent than a face to face agent because face to face people. You can knock on a door and that doesn't cost you any money. You can call up the senior living facility and that will not cost you much money, just some coffee and donuts or whatever you decide to bring to these facilities. Talk right about seminar that, marketing, right. Seminar right. marketing, yes, correct. Um, things of that nature, that's what uh, makes it um, uh, less money is coming out of your pocket as a new agent doing face-to-face than telesales. But so, with that so being said. Hold up though, wait a minute. You're a guy who's very successful. We're again, 30,000 plus in one week. You're here to tell me that sitting around at home is less effective, but I don't have to drive anywhere. Why is it harder? You don't have to drive anywhere, which is a good point. 
it will um, it costs less money to stay at home to eat lunch and etc uh, you don't need to stop at the fast food facilities to use the bathroom things of this nature roller dogs you know you know at the gas exactly. station the dogs and yeah. the rollers they're roller dogs exactly <laughs> uh, but you will have to put more hours in telesales i mean once again you could work the same amount of hours it's just you would be more effective uh, in front of somebody face to face than just saying hello my name is chris i'm getting back to you about the information you requested when i do that face to face it has a little bit more power behind it essentially so in other words what you're saying is because you lack the in person even like what we're doing right now on zoom i can look at you in the eyes i can read your yes. body language you don't have that over the phone and therefore that adds a layer of difficulty is that what you're saying correct yes exactly what i'm saying What's the remedy or the solution to dealing with that lack of, of uh, effectiveness, right? Because you can't read, hear, see as well as you could in person. How do you overcome that in telesales? Your voice. Your voice and you performing Dave's script. You have to be a performer. You have to get into the mindset of now you're an actor. And guess what? The paycheck might come with it as well in the future, just to let you know. Just because, you know, if you act the part, use Dave's script essentially over the phone, but you have to fluctuate your voice just like I'm doing now. You have to come in powerful and then back off when needed. These are the main criteria needed for telephone sales. You have to have somebody's attention. You need to be in the middle of their mind essentially over the phone. You have to grab their attention the second that they answer that phone, you have to do your best to grab whatever attention you can get from them, especially if you're doing outbound sales. Right. Outbound meaning you're calling leads. You're not sitting around waiting for them to call you. That's called inbound. Correct. Yes. So can especially you give us your outbound. script? Like, let, can we hear what it sounds like to perform a script in the right way when you're doing an outbound call? Dave, I do your script. That's all I do. So I, I, I know I checks in the mail. I, and all that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I do your script. And the first part of it, the opening of the script, folks, especially in telesales, is probably where you're going to receive the most amount of friction. It's going to okay. be the most difficult for you. Okay. So when I say, hi, Dave, my name is Chris. I was calling you back about the information you requested on our Facebook page. It was about the new state regulated final expense program. And you said your favorite hobby was blah, 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 things of that nature. You just have to come at them very powerful. Like be the lion, folks, when you're on the phone and then learn how to tone it down to be the lamb. That's really what has to go down, essentially. <laughs> right. So what happens if I, if I call somebody and I'm reading my pretend script here? This is, if you ever get anything from Transamerica that will never stop sending you junk, I don't know how many trees have been murdered because of junk that I never opened. But uh, if, as, if I was reading my script, is this how it's supposed to sound? Hey, John, this is David Duford. I'm giving you a call back about some information you requested about our new state regulated. And click. click. I've already <laughs> hung up. I've already hung up. Yes. That Why? was a great example of what not to do. Yes. <laughs> right. I, I, why do I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tongue in cheek here, right, folks? Yes. But here's, here's the thing. This is what I've noticed training agents to sell over the phone. This is what Chris has noticed. The biggest X factor here is you and it's your performance of the script. I'll be blunt with you. If you're boring, if you can't speak clearly, concisely with dynamism and, and energy, like a lion, like Chris said, you're dead in the water, dead on arrival. Chris, am I saying anything wrong here? No, that, once again, that's telesales, folks. Uh, yes. Face to face. Yes. Uh, you know, Dave would have a better idea on that. Uh, I would assume you'd have to have some sort of energy face to face as well. It would just help you out. But telesales, yes, the tonality means a lot. And here's the thing. My, my finding is, and I've, I've trained face to face agents since 2013. I've trained telesales agents in some capacity since 2000, 2018, more heavily since 2020, since the lockdowns happened. Um, my finding is you can be a lot more monotonous, deadpan, less performative as a face-to-face -face agent than you can over the phone. And it's so important that part of our recruitment requirements when you're looking to do telesales with us is this is why we do a video. Some of you may have applied and you're like, why do I have to send a video in? It's because we can kind of tell pretty quickly 
based on how you perform the script, if telesales is even really in your alley, and some of this can be trained, but I don't know, you tell me, Chris, some people don't cut it in telesales. Am I wrong? Correct. No, you're but they could do correct. They could do well in face-to-face, -face, right? Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely a fact. Folks, just because you might not make it in telesales, face-to-face, -face, you could definitely do it. No matter if you have a very strong accent, if you're just not an excitable person and you can't perform the script essentially on the phone. Face-to-face, -face, it is, once again, this is all hard. Let's not kid each other. 100%, man. Okay, it's all, life insurance is one of the hardest sales that you could possibly make here. But face-to-face, -face, you could make more mistakes, essentially. There's less forgiveness. I mean, there's more forgiveness, I should say. Less on the phone. Um, so I know people that didn't make it on, on the phone, telesales, and are flourishing face-to-face. -face. There's actually one lady in Texas. She called up all these senior living facilities to do seminar marketing, and she's doing great at it. That was her thing. She was a teacher. She's used to talking to people in front of a, you know, in the classroom, a large audience, essentially, whether it's children or adults, and she's doing great with it. Ask her to sell something over the phone. She wouldn't have a chance. She really wouldn't. But face-to-face, -face, she's making a very good living doing it. So don't, don't confuse that. Uh, just because you can't do one, you can do the other in this business. Awesome. So I'm sitting here with uh, Christopher Sorrentino, a uh, couple a year experience agent with the four insurance group, specializes in final expense. Best month, best week was well over 30,000 in premium, which is guys is really substantial. So Chris knows what he's talking about. Um, let's see what else on telesales here. Um, uh, let me make a note here, kind of some commentary I've, I've, Always Just, uh, with let yeah. me cut you off for a second. Please. I did that 30 plus a week. That was working 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then working Saturday on top of it for me to accomplish that. I had seven deals one day, six deals the next day, on and on. But it took every minute of essentially the day to do that, just to let you know. Why don't we talk about that? T tell us about what it's really like to sell over the phone. What do you, what's your day look like? How does your week look like? What are you focused on? Take us through that. Well, whatever time zone I'm in, I usually try to start at eight, eight in the morning, whatever time zone it, it may be. If you're in the Pacific time zone, you're going to have to do it a little bit earlier. So when I'm out and wherever on the West coast, I, I usually wake up around six, seven uh, in the morning. Um, as you get to central time zone and East time zone, uh, 8 a.m is when I start going. And I do stop around eight or nine o'clock at night, depending on how my voice is. Because if you're going to talk to that many people over the phone, your voice will take some damage. I'll just, uh, there's a couple of people in on this call right now that could actually vouch for that. One being uh, John Gramble. When he actually uh, worked and put in a good 12 hour day, on, uh, you should hear his voice at the end of the day. Come on, that's never happened, come on. <laughs> <laughs> John doesn't work. <laughs> but yes, he just um, talks exactly. Talk, he just talks. I'm about work. <laughs> so <laughs> really, um, course by the end of the night, and Chris knows that. So it, it actually was, and, and uh, once again, this is not a uh, an everyday occurrence with John, but he has been down that road. So I commend him for that. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell um, us. So, so in other words, I think what your implication, or correct me if I'm wrong, is that the way you make money is by talking to people a lot yes. on the phone, yes. right? Correct. Um, it, it is a chore to get the person on the phone. Yes. But once you get that person on the phone, you do have to maximize that. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, you know, on every call, as we know. Once again, it might take I've, – I've gone a whole week and a half without selling anything. Um, and yes, it was, I didn't want to call up Dave and be like, listen, Dave, I didn't sell anything the last week and a half, uh, but that's part of life, especially in telesales. Uh, that was actually working though, folks, that wasn't not working and then saying I didn't do anything for a week and a half. That was actually still putting in the 12 hours or 10 hours a day uh, to do that. But it's not necessarily the amount of phone dials you make. It's the amount of time you put into it. I mean, the, the best days that I've had, I've only called maybe 50 to 80 people, but I've spoken 
to 10 or 15 people, which each conversation does take time. And you do have to have a conversation with these people, folks. You can't just think that you're going to be a miracle script reader and they're going to want to sign an email signature or do a phone interview with the home office or however that carrier that you're going to use does it, just to let you know. You have to perform the script. Wait, so are you saying that I just, if, if I read the script, isn't that all it takes to make money? Or is there more to just reading a script? But then we talk about performance, yeah. but there's this kind of middle ground. Can you expand on that? You, you have to do more than read the script, unfortunately. Everything can't be written down on a piece of paper for you to react to certain things. You have to have a little showmanship, a little sales, salesmanship, I say, a little finesse. Uh, any salesperson will tell you that. Sometimes things come at you unexpectedly and you have to, you know, Get out of the way, essentially, and just, you know, um, audible to play if you know sports in that way. Uh, if you don't, you just have to make things up, uh, shooting from the hip, so to speak. Read and react, right? Correct. That's, exactly. That is that's a so, professional term. That's so important in sales is to be able to read the situation in the, mo in the moment and know how to react, even if it's off script, right? So we walk this weird middle line in sales where we want to follow the script because the script is the surefire process to keep us on course towards the ultimate goal, which is closing the deal. But at the same time, we don't want to be so close-minded and, and not um, aware of what's happening in front of us. And that's where that read and react side is so important. Again, what I have seen in this business, as somebody recruits agents and telesales face-to-face, -face, has success with both, the read and react principle is so much more important over the phone. It's important both. But you got to have that over the phone on top of performing, on top of following the script. Yes. And on the phone, I mean, you have to do this face to face as well. But on the phone, it's a little bit more important. You have to listen to what the person on the other line is saying. I can't convey how important that is. And when I first started, even though I was sales experienced, I had plenty of telesales and face to face training under my belt. It still I was not listening to the person on the other line. And I was just trying to get through Dave's script, essentially. And they called me out on it, folks. I lost tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not joking. Tens of thousands of dollars because of me being green to the business, essentially, and not listening to the person on the other phone. Can you, can you give me an example of, of just that, being able to read and react in the situation, whether yourself or with an agent you've trained? Yes, uh, such as thoughts, concerns, one of the most powerful parts of the script, the thoughts, concerns, folks, when you ask that question. So what were your thoughts, concerns that caused you to fill out this information on our website, Facebook page, whatever lead you're using? When you ask that, some people will go off on a tangent and they'll just tell you everything, which is great. And I sit there and I have my pen or pencil and paper and I jot down little phrases that they might use to help me through the course of the script. But they will tell me a bunch of stuff. They'll tell me uh, certain things of why they need the policy, of what they want to cover with the policy. And then I would go into, because I see it in the script, you know, uh, they'll tell me what they have if they don't have anything, because maybe a family member just passed away within the last week or month or a couple of months. And then I'll go them, what do you have in place right now to cover the burden of your final expenses? But they just told me that in the thoughts concerns. And it's because I just saw that in the script. Right. And I was like, I have to, there are some questions, brilliant questions that are in the script that you might not have to ask folks because they will tell you that. And I've had people say, well, Chris, I just told you that. And they'll act like I'm not listening to them. And then they'll just mosey me off the phone, which has happened, just to let yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, the, the idea when you ask, and I've heard this too, it's funny you bring that up, it's like the person just said it and you obviously weren't listening or you're just so stuck to the script that you forget to like actually have kind of a living, breathing reaction and listening, right? And you can hear it in their voice like, yeah, I, I retired from the military, whatever the question was. And but what the output is what? They can, they sense that you're not listening. They're correct care, therefore they don't trust you. And trust is everything, isn't it, in this business? Yes, it is. A thousand percent correct. So that's what I find the hardest for new agents 
is they're so excited to get to the next part of the script and try to get the application done, which I understand because I was there. I was there, folks. I did it. I made the mistakes. You really have to try to speak slow, slower than normal. Don't go too slow because nobody wants to listen to that either. But slower than normal and listen to what they have to say after each question that you might ask them. And if they go on a tangent, which, which would be a good thing, just jot down, okay, they, so they answered the question of covered, what, what do they want to accomplish with this policy? What do they currently have in place? Things of that nature. Um, you'll see in Dave's script, if you look at his script, which everyone should, uh, I, I, once again, if you've been around for a while like myself or a new agent, I still look at Dave's script, just to let you know that. And if you look at Dave's script, there's parts where it says additional questions to ask. I've, I've, I've went through many times where agents would just ask those questions because they're written on the script, but it says additional questions just in case you didn't get the answers that you are needed. I'm just saying in telesales, you need to have a tight script. And by having a tight script, it means that you're listening to your client and having a conversation with them, as well as asking them the questions that are needed. Well, so you, we had an agent once that came in and did a script entirely different. It was kind of this talk script. Remember that? You know who I'm talking about? Remember that? Yes, I do. What, what, what is, what are the, the wear act- down tactic? That was the wear down tactic. The yeah. wear down tactic. Yeah. I, we, I, I, I know that script by heart. See, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So why, why is the wear – so let's describe what the wear down script is versus ours and why we do our script the way we do because I think it's important to di- differentiate between both. Well, would you, do you want me to go into our script first or, or the wear no, down like, let's do, script? Like what makes a good script, would you say, for final experience? What makes a good script is something that gets you to have a conversation with somebody. That's what makes a good script because if they're not laughing with you or chuckling with you or having somewhat of a good time with you over the phone, they're not likely to do business with you. And that goes for face to face as well. If you're not having a good time in somebody's house, the odds that they're going to do business with you, it gets less and less every minute that goes by. Um, So the, the, the thing that um, I've, once again, I've been doing sales my whole life, and I've never been this successful at all before in any sales job uh, with Dave and with Dave's script and the way it goes. Uh, that's a fact. That's not my opinion. That's just the way it went down. So when you're doing a script, if you can't have a conversation with them and sound like you're not reading the script, then ultimately you're dead in the water. You're not going to do anything. When you do a script called the wear down tactic, the other person is not speaking essentially you're doing all the talking there you're not having a conversation you're asking them these questions that are realistically yes and no answers i want people to actually tell me why do they need the insurance you know what are they looking to cover with their policy things of that nature you could say those questions millions different uh, you know millions of ways as long as you equal the point that dave is trying to make in his script essentially. So that's really the difference. When you do a wear down tactic, it's just you being a script reader, them answering yes or no questions. We're not chuckling. We're not laughing. We're not, uh, you know, saying we're not building a rapport, essentially. You're just being a machine and you're just being a script reader, essentially, if that's what you want to be known as. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Our, our theory and how we do telesales and really how we do all sales and final expense is that we want to create a relationship with the client. We're not trying to become best friends. We're just trying to become friendly, right? And you can do that in a matter of a minute or two, building rapport intentionally. But really where the magic comes and how we operate and how the theory behind our script is, is our open-ended questioning. We want to know what their thoughts and concerns were, why they sent the card or requested the information back online. We want to know what that inflection point was in life that made them wake up to the fact that they need life insurance. Maybe it was a loved one dying. Maybe it was them having a health scare and they saw reality for what it was. That hearse with their, you know, their time to go was backing up against the front porch. And we need to show them that death is going to happen to everybody, including them, not on their time scale and that they need to be prepared. And we find having a conversation like this, it not only sells the policy better, but more importantly in this business, unlike anything else out there you sell, not the policy that you sell, it's the policy that you keep after you sell it. Because in this business, you're on the hook, guys. If you're new to this business, everybody here is going to be paid in what's called an advanced commission. 
And if that policy lapses, typically within the first 180 to 270 days, meaning they stop paying it, you owe back a percentage of that commission. Now, nobody will tell you this because everybody wants to tell you the Kool-Aid and how great it is and look at my cars and watches and planes. <laughs> yeah, they won't tell you that if you sell the wrong way, you have chargebacks. And if you don't pay the chargebacks, you owe that money back. So that's why we don't like the wear down approach. A lot of agencies teach the wear down approach. They get right to business. They don't develop some kind of connection or report or, or ask open-ended questions. And they write a lot of business, but guess what they also do? Lose a lot of business. And you won't ever hear that talked about on the socials because nobody ever talks about bad stuff. Well, that's what happened when I first started. Essentially, I was pushing these people like I would if we were selling a car, a boat, a stock, real estate, a mortgage, things uh, uh, that are tangible where the people have to use these things while yeah. they're alive. You could push a little bit more. With life insurance, when I started doing that, essentially, and just doing the, um, the wear down tactic, so to speak, uh, essentially, and pushing people into doing it, they would just charge me back. And I had about 40 chargebacks in my first three months, uh, somewhere in that range. Once again, I was writing business, but I wasn't keeping the business. Right. So I looked like a superstar when I started, but I wasn't getting the, the money in my checking account. So to say, like today, the money goes in the checking account today, folks. Right. right. So. And I appreciate you being um, sincere and candid about that. Because again, most people don't like to talk about their rough spots in their career, but oh. important, it's important you guys hear this because what you won't hear anywhere in this business is how agents write a ton of business and because they use shoddy carriers, crappy scripts that are high pressure, they never tell you about all the money they lose on chargebacks. And, and, and that's a, an incomplete image of what the reality of this business is like. So what you sell, how you sell, it absolutely matters. And you got to really take this stuff seriously and make sure that the organization you're part of actually cares about that too. So yeah, go ahead, Chris. The, 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 and one thing is there's one glamorous thing or maybe two or maybe even three if you really talk to a couple of people about telesales. One being you're in the friendly confines of your property, home, apartment, whatever it is you know that you live in. So that's a good thing. You don't have to travel about and do all that stuff. But let me tell you something, folks, especially telesales. You will listen to the phone ring the majority of the day, and you will listen to voicemails the majority of the day. It is not glamorous whatsoever. It will mentally beat you down, and you will, after your first day, you, you might want to quit. Um, there is a good <laughs> chance of that. Uh, there's a reason why, um, before I even started this, when I looked at Dave's YouTubes and other YouTube personalities in the business, they always say 90 plus percent of the people fail in this business. I, I don't have hardcore data, but I guarantee you it's more than that in telesales. Just because of that fact, you do not speak to that many people per day. If you think you have the best leads in the world, you generate them by yourself, whatever it may be, I promise you it is a grind and you will have to get hardened to that fact. I want you to relay that story to speak about the grind. Remember that time that you went three days without a single pickup? And then you. Uh, and yeah, you, that was without a pickup. I went over a week and a half without a sale. I went three days without anybody picking up the phone. How many calls did you make? How, how many calls oh, did you make? In the, oh, about I remember those, 492. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was, it was something like that. that. No, that was. Sorry, that was not a pickup. Oh, yes, that was a pickup before a sale. That was, but I have gone a week and a half without a sale, just to let you know. So that was another worse. event, folks. Okay. Yeah, that was another event, just to let you guys know how glamorous this is, just right. to let you know. Yeah. No, yes, that, 492 that, calls, and I finally got a sale after that. Correct. And I think you so got another one days. pretty soon after that, too. Yes. Right? The, third, the third call after that, I got another sale. Yes, correct. Right. Oh, but imagine, that. imagine being on the 491th call. Oh. Everybody forgets that. Oh. You're, you're ready to jump off the ledge. You, I was. I said I should have went to a beach in, in, in Tahiti and just stayed there instead of waste my time calling people all, all week long. But yes, sorry, go ahead. No, and that's, I appreciate it. But that's the reality is, is, is a lot of, if you've never done sales before, there will be what feels like a lot of wasted time. But you have to measure your success, not even hour to hour, even day to day. It's really week to week, if not month to month. But a lot can go haywire and not results oriented day to day, even week to week. 
But you look back over a longer period of time, things tend to smooth out as long as you do what? Put the call time in, right? Get on the phone, try to talk to people, make the phone calls, right? Okay, last question here, Chris, and then um, you good on time? Yeah. Yes, I'm good. Next appointment's not for a while. Questions in the chat. If you have questions for Chris, throw them in the chat. If you have questions for me, throw them in the chat. Let's round this up. Three things. You trained agents here for a while. You've seen agents come and go. You've had success, ups and downs. What are the top three tips you would give agents who want to pursue telesales or, or yeah, just who wanted to mm-hmm. pursue telesales and final expense to give them the best chances of success? If you want to make real money, and I don't mean a thousand dollars a week, folks, uh, or two, I mean real adult money, you're going to have to put in a full day, which is more than eight hours a day. I would take 10 to 12 minimum every day and work on Saturdays. Uh, there's a couple agents on this call that will tell you that Friday and Saturdays, um, for the most part, there's always exceptions to the rule, are some of the best days to call people, telesales. You would have to ask Dave about face-to-face. I couldn't give you any information about that, but telesales, those are two very good days. Um, you will have to be able to listen to the phone ring a lot, folks. You're going to have to be able to listen to a lot of voicemails or not talk to anybody. Um, it's really just how long you could sit at your desk or wherever your your operation is and be able to sustain the dialing. You have to dial, whether it be from a CRM or you taking three or four cell phones and manually dialing like I do. I use a CRM. I have three cell phones as well on top of the CRM. And that's for independent agents. If you're going to do outbound phone calls, outbound sales, you need every little bit of help you could possibly get. I promise you that. So those are my essential things about how to what a telesales agent has to do and learn how to live with. And the third, the third piece of advice. <laughs> oh, we forgot that. Right. The third piece of advice is to have a very good script, to have a tight script, meaning, you know, your rebuttals, you know, okay. How to fluctuate your voice, the tonality of it. Your script is everything. There's actually an agent that I would like to praise. I don't know if she's on this call right now. Her name is Melissa Barrett. Whether she's face-to-face or telesales, her script is incredibly tight. Meaning if somebody comes at her with a not interested, I'm busy right now, I'm at work, the car horn is going off, the dog is peeing in the bathroom, in the kitchen, whatever it may be, she, her script, she knows how to come at those people from every which way possible. And you, once again, we can't sell everybody. Some people just are not sellable over the phone. But at least she knows her script and she knows her rebuttals. And that's very important, folks, because if you're going to blah, 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 or you're going to have dead air, uh, dead air is another uh, bad thing for a telesales agent, just to let you know. Uh, But if you're going to fumble through the rebuttals and the script and stuff like that, as a telesales agent, you're done. Call it a day, folks. If you're going to do face to face, uh, you might be able to get away with that. But Dave will tell you better than me on that aspect. So it's funny. I'll mention this. We have, we have Melissa. We did a call and did a critique of one of her calls. This is like our famous call that we have all of our new agents listen to Melissa listened to, and she's on the call right now. She, she literally rebutted like 50 times on the sales. Great. From beginning to end, this lady said, I'm busy. I'm not right now. I'm not interested. And Melissa just like, like Chris said, tight, 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 overcome, keep going, overcome, keep going. Then she got to the close and she rebutted it like 25, 30 times, probably more, and closed her. It was, it was just great. It was just an, if for the, the, the sake of just listening to what it's supposed to sound like. It was amazing. But um, yeah, you got to be tight. You it was go. good. It, it was good that everybody got to listen to that. But just imagine that was just one call. I'm out of fingers at how many times Melissa actually did that, just to let you know. So <laughs> just, your, your script needs to be really good. Whether you need to practice that an hour or 12 hours a day, that's up to your level of learning. Uh, but those are really the three main things that you have to do. So let's take questions here. I'm a New York agent, so I have to sell New Jersey leads. But I'm also thinking about adding a few states on the West Coast so I can call for longer on. Sorry, I got all this mean crap here. Hold on. 
So I can call longer, uh, close to my part-time job. Which states specific time would you guys recommend? Do you have any states that you like, Chris, on the West Coast, California? Oh, yeah, California. The premiums are through the roof. I wrote two California deals uh, Friday, 151 and 162. And those people in New York, in California, they do not blink at those premiums, folks. Right. You call Alabama, Tennessee, things of that nature, Kansas. I don't want to offend anybody, folks. Um, and that might be a little bit of an issue with those higher premiums. But um, New York, we can't practice our craft, unfortunately, because of certain issues with New York. Uh, Florida as well. Yes. Uh, Florida, California, and New York, um, I find the highest premiums. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So be good. Uh Chris, in your and some of these go back a while, so we may have already covered them, but it's worth repeating. Chris, in your experience, what is the biggest metric to track on a daily or weekly basis that can help your sales? Like, for example, dials, presentations, pickup rate. How many people get? Yes, how many people you get on the phone compared to how many applications you have? And call time too, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, okay. time yes, abso absolutely. Call call time. My apologies, Dave. That's why you're the boss. Call time, <laughs> absolutely, and then the other. To, uh, 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 it's all important, right? Yes. You, know, you can't just be on the phone yeah. and sound like a lame brain, right? Correct. But ultimately, outcomes come from what the inputs you put in, and the inputs is dial time, it's talk time. That, and that's why everybody's like, exactly how many calls should I make a day to make six figures? I don't know. It just it, that's that's beyond the point. It's the activity and the time on task. Time on task meaning, are you calling ten hours plus a day? Like get that first with a good script and then, then we'll start looking at the more nuanced numbers. Right? right. Get the 10 hours under your belt because telesales, you, you can't do eight hours. I mean, you can, if you're a complete superstar folks, but the odds of that happening is pretty slim just to let you know. So get the 10 hours under your belt. Let's get to a thousand dollars a week, you know, that you, that you could generate. And then let's start talking about the YouTube money and about how many millions of dollars and you walking on the beach saying, that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. So let's get it in increments. But What carriers for you personally as an agent do you like writing over the phone? Just like top three. Dave, I have no favorite. I, I write, um, I have so many carriers now, um, thanks to you and the knowledge and stuff. I don't have a favorite carrier. Some agents do, and they're on this call and you could ask them about that. Um, I typically just go with the best available policy for the person that I'm, I have on the other line. I just try to take care of them the best as I possibly can. So that's why I have so many uh, carriers. But with having a lot of carriers, independent agents, face-to-face -face or telesales, you have to do the homework and know how the carrier operates, know their policies. You might not have to know all of them, but it can't hurt to do. So anytime you pick up another carrier, Make sure you know a little bit about the company, how they operate, things of that nature. Well, hold up. Are you saying that new agents to start with like 10 companies or more? No, I'm not. Uh, this for uh, agents that have been around for a little bit. New agents should start with minimal carriers. Get used to those carriers because it is a ton of information, folks, yeah, to right. take in. Even if you're a high IQ person, it's still a ton of information to take in. Right. You know, there's only so much time in the day. So, yes, a small amount of carriers. When I started, Dave, I remember I asked you clear as day. I said, Dave, I have uh, Aetna, CVS, and GTL. You're like, you're ready to go. And I got on the phones after that call with Dave, literally five minutes afterwards, and I had my first application the next day. Done deal. Yep. So, And just with those two carriers. So if you think you need more than that, folks, you are completely incorrect. Do you leave voicemails if they don't pick up? No. Not Why? at all. Because I've only had one person call me back that I could remember. Just one person. That's it. And I used to, and I made it even easier on, on if you use a CRM, you could just hit a bus button to leave a voicemail. And I still only had one person call back. If they're a client of mine, yes, I'll leave a voicemail, but they're already a client. But think about it. If you're calling and you're leaving a 30, maybe, maybe 20 second voicemail. Right. And you do that for every dial and you do 100 dials a day. 100 times 20 is what, 2,000? 2,000 divided by 60 is 35 minutes. 35 minutes times five is, you know, two and a half, three hours, close to. 
Like you've just wasted three hours on a, on a low odds opportunity to get them to call back. If anything, you should not leave a voicemail because what does that do? They're curious. Who is this calling me? Maybe I should call them back. Excellent uh, point as well. Excellent point as well. You, you really, because sometimes if you say, hi, this is Chris, I was getting back to you about blah, blah, blah. They'll just delete it and never call. Uh, insurance trying to sell me something. Click. Exactly. That's exactly how it goes down, folks. Yep. They don't want to talk to y'all. I'm telling you. No. They, they don't care. You got a license. You're trying to help them. You're trying to take their money for all they know. You got to be live on the phone with them to get over, overcome a lot of that stuff. Are you using an app for displaying a local number out of state? You just dial from the numbers you got, right? No, I have two Texas numbers and I have a New York number. And I just use those numbers essentially. Um, uh, and I've never had a problem, really. I've, used, I've actually put that theory to bed. That's a myth that was busted because I actually called a bunch of Facebook leads that Dave actually bought for other agents to use. And I used a spam phone number. And I, I did a fan, spam. I called 37 people and 10 of them answered. Now, 10 of them did not answer very nicely, but nonetheless, they did answer, folks, just to let you know. So what's the number one thing telesales agents need to do to increase the amount of pickups that they get? They need to make more phone calls, <laughs> number one, but that... What, I don't know where you're going. Triple dial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's non-negotiable. I don't even think about that. What's triple dialing for the audience yeah. that may not know? Folks, this is non-negotiable telesales. This is not, oh, maybe I'll do it next time. No, no, no. The phone goes straight to voicemail. No, no, no. You, you need to dial three times in concession consecutively, one after the other. So I call up Dave. He doesn't pick up. It goes to voicemail. I hang up. I call right back. Two seconds later, five seconds later, within seconds later, I call them right back. With a house phone, you want to wait a little bit longer just in case, but on a cell phone. And then I call back again for a third time to make it a triple dial. You have to do that via telesales, folks. People nowadays, because of all the bad apples throughout the whole entire world, whether it be the robocalls or the people from Pakistan or India or Ghana or wherever in the, around the world they're coming to scam you, uh, that's why it's even harder to do telesales nowadays. So you have to triple dial, correct? It's a pattern interrupt. That's what we call it. So people think it's their grandkid that's been in a car wreck and, you know, some strangers calling to report what's happening because it's like in case of emergency and people go all sorts of weird ways, but it, it disrupts the normal behavior pattern to handle calls, which is the what not ever answer the things. Right. So what we teach is you got to always triple dial. And I can't tell you how many people actually they won't triple dial because they're like, well, I want to hurt the guy's feelings. But guess what's yeah. worse? You never connecting with them to help them and then croaking and not having coverage because you didn't have the courage to go all the way. So keep that in mind. Would you recommend Chris doing face-to-face -face first before trying telesales? Absolutely. Yes, I would. I would because you could transition to telesales at any time. There's no, it's not going anywhere, folks. The phone's not going anywhere. It's there. I suggest that you learn how to be an insurance agent first. Uh, learn the underwriting, things that'll help you in that nature. Because on the phone, you have to be way quicker than face-to-face. -face. You're underwriting. You can't, you know, just be, you know, grab a cup of coffee from the person or drink a glass of water and stuff and make some little conversation. You're on the phone. If you're doing outbound, you're calling them. So you interrupted whatever they were doing when you called them. So you do need to be much quicker. Um, I would suggest go face-to-face -face at first. And then once you get experience, then go telesales. Yes. I'll tell you this, guys. Again, I've recruited for years and I'm very well of the averages in this business. And, and the failure rate is definitely 90% plus of the entirety of the agency population that shuffles out because they're not trained well or they join an MLM Kool-Aid scheme. And you know, it's recruit people to recruit stuff, not sell and learn how to sell. Um, and some people... Uh, you know, are recruited into the allure of telesales. And that's, it's, it is alluring. You work from home. You don't have to go anywhere. It's great, but it's way more challenging than I think it's really presented. And I believe uh, aggregately across the business uh, throughout all agencies, the failure rate is much higher for telesales and face-to-face -face for all the reasons Chris talked about. It's not what people want to hear, but it's the truth. And, and if you're not sure, and this is kind of my metric, somebody mentioned, how do I know if I should do telesales or face-to-face? -face? That's typically the route. 
to really trust your instincts, right? Your instincts are probably right. If you feel like you've got a penchant towards face-to-face, -to -face, do it. Plenty of opportunity there. If you really feel like Chris did coming in, like he really felt strongly about telesales because he had the experience, he had the feeling, he had the setup. I told him, do telesales. Um, follow your gut. If you're not sure, if you're kind of on the fence, you like the sound of telesales, but you're kind of worried about it, do face-to-face. -face. Uh, again, more people than not who think they can do telesales really underestimate the true difficulty that comes with it. That face-to-face nece -face -face necessarily doesn't have. I just want to add to that. If you feel like you do telesales, you should do the script, do Dave's script and record yourselves, whether it's with a family member or a friend or whatever, and then listen to yourself back after you've done and completed Dave's script. And then you could honestly make a you know, good assumption. Maybe I'm ready for this or maybe I'm not. I guarantee it. The majority of you will cringe when you listen to yourself, do Dave scripts thing, and you'll know if you're ready for telesales or not. That's a good way to see if you're ready or not, folks. So why do you have so many cell phones and use a CRM dialer? Why Most not people will block your number. People will block your number after you triple dial them. I've called people and uh, there's agents on this call right now that will tell you what I did uh, that I could remember clear in my memory. Uh, one sale was a couple of weeks ago. I looked at the call history on the bottom of the CRM. This would be the 63rd time I'm contacting this person since <laughs> August of what of last, you know, whatever day in August of 2022. So that's why I don't consider old leads, old leads. I, I put that, I threw that in the garbage pail as well. Um, they're all new leads for a whole 12 months. It's a brand new lead to me. That's right. the way I consider it for the year to each his own, whatever you'd like to do. Um, go ahead, Dave. It looks no, like no, 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 you're good. Uh, Katie, to answer your question, if you're interested in learning more about joining our agency, daviddeford.com forward slash FAQ. Uh, read through that, watch the videos, and then you'll see how you can apply for a position. We have an application interview process um, that we require agents to go through. So just go to the website. You'll see what to do, daviddeford.com. Vanessa, uh, ask your question in the chat, please. Ken, is the, there a CRM that comes with your agency that is a dialer? Yeah, we, so for a career side, we use Vanilla Soft. This is the side of the business where we provide the leads. Um, that those, lead, those CRM is really good. I like it. That's what Chris has used for basically the entire time he's working with me. And then if you're a broker and you buy your own leads, um, we can introduce you and set you up on Vanilla Soft. There's a lot of good CRMs out there. Some are better than others. But Vanilla Soft just is solid. The, the reception on the phone is really good. The cadence and sequencing to get through your leads is really good. You can tie in your leads to automatically populate in the CRM as soon as they come in so you can contact them immediately. Um, it's a little bit of a headache to get set up with, admittedly. But once you have it set up and you're familiar with it, it's, it's great. You can automate text messages when you call. Lots of yeah, The customer service is, is excellent. Their customer service for Vanilla Soft, you could actually speak to a, a live human being. You could use the chat. You could do email. That's up to you. I have not had a problem in my two plus years using Vanilla Soft ever with any technical side that I couldn't be helped with via the yeah, customer service. And that's an important thing too. Guys, when you're looking at a CRM in this business, if you do, you don't have to, by the way. CRM, it's helpful, but if you've got a phone and you've got a finger and you can dial numbers and you can do that all day long, you'll be fine. CRMs not, they're not like required for success. They help, but they're not required. They um, do help. They do. I have, I'm out of fingers about how many deals I got from the automated text messages. True. Just let you know. That's true. True. Now the, the key point I was making, crap, what was I making point? About the CRM. Lost, lost my train of thought, Chris. It was, very, oh. it was, it was the million dollar idea. Oh, well, that's for you guys to figure out here. <laughs> I'll, it'll come back to me. Where's Gramble? He usually jumps in. He knows where you left off. He yeah, was... no, he was just saying that all you need is your fingers and your phone. That's that's where he was going with that. Like you don't really need a CRM, which I don't use, as we all know. So mm, mm. Yeah, don't yeah, I know? I know yes. Chris. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, all right, let's keep it. We got a bunch of questions here in 10 minutes left. So what is the potential for a part-time agent working 11 to 7 and Saturdays? Um, I mean, the potential is the sky this is the limit. We can't tell you with exactitude what you're going to make. Some Most people fail, like we've said a million times. Um, to me, uh, you need to invest on a part-time basis. If you're buying leads, minimum of 600 a week, closer to 800 in digital leads, uh, full-time. 
Telesales is not cheap, folks. Eight hundred to twelve fifty. Minimum. You're starting a business, folks. Yeah. Uh, any business, if you had a storefront with things, you have to buy equipment, you have to buy material, things of this nature. This is the cheapest business you could start, just to let you know. But nonetheless, uh, telesales is at the highest level of uh, leads uh, that you could pay for. Right. Obviously. Acquisition costs is a little higher for sure. Not acquisition, yes. but the cost per lead. Yeah. Um, or weekly spend. Could you please provide the recording of Melissa's call? If you're an agent, I can. It's on the <laughs> website. Got, I can't give everything. <laughs> yeah, no. Can't do that. Come I on, only boy. give 99.99%. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Scott. No, it's, it's part of our agency. When you join, you'll get access to it. Um, we hear her all day. Yes, she sure does. Uh, Florida. I don't know what your question was, crew. Do you have any tips for dealing with people who only try to call who you only, I'm sorry, there's a stupid meme thing here and I can't get rid of it. Okay. Who only, uh, who you try calling, but so people who don't pick up your phone, but try to text or email you, like, how do you deal with that, Chris? I usually give it to John or Jim Gerling. <laughs> I'm only, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, ha I do have people that uh, say email only, please, and text only, please. I, I try to do my best and, and write back to them um, about how, you know, I wish it was that easy to just do business via text and email. Um, th there's really, I don't really have a good way to go about that, Dave, because I try to like take, if you're not going to talk to me over the phone yeah. and we can't do an application, should I really take you serious and take your business? Right. Essentially, like, just as they need to trust me, I need to trust them somewhat that they're in this. That's why I ask them the questions of why do you need this? What are you looking to cover with this policy? That's why we ask those powerful questions because right. we want to know what they're looking to do. Essentially. It's, it's like it's like knocking on a door face to face and they're like yelling through the door. Just give me the quote. We'll do business like this. <laughs> you, you can't do that. Like you have to engage in a conversation. And, and here's the thing, guys. This is this is the reality. People who are interested will talk to you, okay? They're qualifying you through the filter of texting and email because they're not sold on talking to you. So, you know, a good response would be like, hey, totally understand why you say that. This is why I need to talk to you because there's so many options. What you do with it's up to you. I've got a ton of people to talk to, so it shouldn't take more than five minutes. Can I call now? That's all you need to do. And if they won't even relent to that, then they're just they're just wasting your time. And here's Agreed. what you'll find out if you like badger these people to get on the phone and somehow, some way you do, they're gonna continue to waste your time and they're gonna put it off because they're just not fully interested. So so what's the solution? More leads, talk to more people, get more leads, make more calls because you're gonna deal with this stuff. It's just the same as people who won't let you in the door. How do you get into somebody's door that won't let you? Well, I mean, beyond you know, knocking the door down. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to find more people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Chase, uh, thank you for David, for all the content. You're welcome. My question is if you're, if I were to join your agency, what opportunities are there to grow into an agency owner or mentor other agents? Yeah. Plenty of opportunities. That's definitely a part of my goal over the next couple of years is to duplicate myself as an agency owner. A couple of different pathways to do that. Uh, you can go the route to train agents that we provide or recruit, um, granted that you actually have success in this business. I don't recruit you to recruit other people right away. We need to see you have street cred. That's the problem with this business is everybody recruits anybody with a pulse. And I'm not like that. You need to have some success first, probably are on the same page if you're here. Um, but beyond that, you can uh, possibly get into one of our managerial programs where we, we provide the agent, you give them mentorship, coaching, et cetera, like what we preach here. Or if you want to go down the independent agency route, that's an option too. I've, I have several agencies that work with me that are self-branded. They're not necessarily DeFord Insurance Group agencies, but they're in my you know, chain of command and they do their own thing. So there's kind of two different routes, but the point is, yes, we absolutely support it as long as you get success and are somebody worth being trained by. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Uh, Ray, hey, I have background in the mortgage industry looking to get into the business. I have three questions for you today. What is the ex realistic income expectation for the first 60 to 90 days with a healthy ad budget? I don't give in income expectations because it's, it's so across the board. Um, the reality I, is- I would say it's not going to be a lot. Just to let you know, if, if you're a brand new agent, uh, you really need to have like a year under your belt before you start making 
uh, as earned income and stuff of that nature. The first year is the hardest for sure. Right? Yeah. I mean, you're not getting paid the full commission up front. You're only getting paid a three fourths of it. And then you're dealing with the lapses that come through occasionally that that'll be deducted out of future advanced commission. So I always tell agents, once you get past the first year, year and a half, you'll start getting the back residuals. And I mean, Chris, your stress level dropped. I know for sure. After Oh God. Year. It was a lot <laughs> better. Um, once you start seeing that money. So realistically, here's how I would put it, Ray. You should be making sales in your first week. If you truly get, if you truly go through the training, you go through the process as you should, you get up and running, you should be making sales. How many sales is going to be predicated on your, your capacity, your talent, your work ethic, et cetera. You should be profiting off of your investment in telesales first week or two. But certainly, like Chris said, there's going to be room for growth. You know, it takes a long time to get good at anything, but you should see results if this business, and this is the caveat, if this business is right for you. We let agents go. I tell agents all the time, if you don't make sales in your first week and you've honestly given it the old college try to train, to study, to prepare, and you're not making sales in that first week, you don't need to do this. It's not for you. It's harsh, but it's real. Can I bring on an appointment setter to help me grind the calls? A face-to-face -face for sure. Um, we don't operate a front or base program or really teach that for telesales where somebody fronts the, the, the lead, qualifies it. it. Just It's more complicated than it sounds and nobody really ever does it who's successful. But for appointment setting face-to-face -face for sure. I'm moving to Texas in March, but I currently live in Louisiana. Or is that lower Alabama? Will this create any complications with getting my license? No, you're good. You can always like change residency of it. Our Melissa's recordings on school. They're on the training site. Yep, yep, yep. And she's on the Zoom calls. You can always listen to Chris. Yeah. And Melissa on her Zoom call. Go ahead. Talk about yeah. Zoom call. Well, um, for the most part, uh, there's very experienced agents in the Zoom call. So if the new agents or even experienced agents have any questions or whatever, uh, there is always, for the most part, somebody on that Zoom that could help you answer any questions that you might have. And you might catch one of us pitching a client on there as well, uh, depending on what day it is. Excellent opportunity to learn. Yeah. We don't have a salary for the career program at Straight Commission only. Um, have you had any success with live transfer calls? Not really. That's been probably the most desirous yet difficult thing to get is a call that is transferred to you. Um, why is that the case? Because they're very expensive. Most agents, that as much as they want them, we're, okay, what's a live transfer? Imagine you sitting in your underwear in your home office. The phone calls with an interested prospect. They're ready to buy, right? That's the dream that's sold, right? Um, but the problem with it is that, and everybody wants that, I don't get me wrong. The problem with it is very expensive. It, it exists like $60, $80 a lead. Most people don't have the money uh, to do the leads right. And the other things we found is they fluctuate in your capacity to take the inbounds. And trust me, if I've tried multiple vendors. It's hard to keep consistent inbounds going. Um, there's no telling what the consistency is of getting the calls. And sometimes the quality is terrible. You know, So it's been, it's been very difficult. Some will contest the quality of the sales is worse because it's kind of like an instant, I need to buy reaction type of thing. Chris, anything you want to add to that? I doubt you want me to, so I'll just stay quiet on that. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Tell No, that's why we got, I told you, brutal uh, honesty. Tell us, tell us what you think about them. I am not a fan of inbound phone calls whatsoever. Um, I, I think, uh, just like you said, uh, they're very expensive, if not more than $80 a call. Actually, we were with a person that wanted 110 at one time, and you put yeah. the kibosh on that. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, thank you for that, El Jefe, because uh, I would have been even deeper in a hole. Um, right. But anyway, inbound calls, I find it, it's impulse buying. They're, it's the day of that they call in, they're very excited to get it. And when the money comes out of whatever account they have, whatever form of payment that they're going to use, they find that it's, it's too much and they don't want it anymore. Once again, it, it depends on the agent. I can only tell you folks about my experience. Um, I started with commercial inbound calls. And uh, I, once again, it might have been because I was brand new uh, as well, but I did receive a, a decent amount of chargebacks because of that. Uh, but after I was a little bit experienced, we did try a little bit of inbound again. And I just found that if somebody's willing to answer your phone call and you could actually 
have a conversation with them when you're calling them, they're more inclined to actually be more interested about buying your product, whatever it may be. And that's just my, uh, what happened to me in my journey. It's- and and I, I'll, I'll say a couple of things on this. Number one, the way you make money in, in any insurance endeavor is, is by activity. And when you do an inbound strategy, you make the activity contingent on something you can't control, right? The vendor. The vendor is going to, at their leisure, decide how much they're going to send with you. But you're also in competition with other leads. I'm sorry, with other agents and other agencies and whatever states they're in that you may or may not be available in. A good point as well, the states. Yeah, you need like 15, 20 plus states to make it work. Very yes. high expense. But, um, but more so, what, what you'll find when you're trained right and you have the right attitude, what you need is just a person who was willing to listen to you and pick your phone up and pick your phone call up. And if you're good at that, you don't have to be married to a live transfer that may be here today and gone tomorrow. Because at the end of the day, if you can outbound well, which is definitely harder, if you can outbound well, it doesn't really matter what kind of leads you work. You just need to make dials, talk to people, make connections, and then go through the script. And now you're in the driver's seat of the conversation. You're in the driver's seat of making the calls and getting the presentations. And you have now what we all want in our business, which is what? Control over what matters most, giving presentations and ultimately creating sales. Amen? Amen. (laughs) Okay, let's see here. Uh, If you're really good at telesales, can you be profitable past the high cost of leads? Sure, absolutely. It's less about the cost of the lead and it's more about your return on investment, right? So, um, you know, granted, all of a sudden done, a good agent don't, shouldn't really care about the cost. It's what do they get in return of how many multiples above the investment, right? That's true, new or experienced. Uh, just to add to that, just to let you know, 50 leads is not a lot of leads. Right. 100 Thank leads you. is really not a lot of leads, folks. Um, one John Granville can call through 100 leads in less than an hour, just to yeah. let you know. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we want our full-time agents on telesales, hundred leads a yeah. week, minimum, uh, minimum, yeah. minimum, probably, probably close to one fifties. You scale up at least. Yes. Michael asked, can I make a living in just California? Yeah. If you do outbound for sure. Plenty of people in California, a Big good premiums. agent out of, out of a heavy hundred policies, how many will cancel? So if you do right, if you sell the right way, which means best carriers, you offer really good carriers and you sell without pressure, you build internal tension, not apply outward pressure, then I would say if you can keep 80 of those 20 or 80 of those 100, you're good. So in other words, 20% can't cancel. That's the goal. Uh, Do you think the funnel system such as advanced marketing for lead setup uh, for Facebook automated appointment setup set for you are good? Yeah, they can be good. The one caveat I have, and I affiliate market with them, so I'm incentivized to offer their programs. I think they're good, but I always tell it like it is too. This isn't necessarily for everybody, like self-generating your own leads, going through that whole process, setting up an elaborate funnel. It, it's not that it's bad, but for most people, they don't go through the whole process because they're not technologically there. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of maintenance. And a lot of people are just better off getting good at selling and just buying leads. So, yeah. I just want to say also uh, with leads, especially telesales, if you're doing outbound leads, you need to call these leads way more than once a day, folks. Whether it be two, three, four times a day, et cetera, um, each day you should call those people if they don't answer the phone uh, multiple times, if not more than that, just like, you know. Like what, two times? And if more, if you can, if you get them in the morning, then you can get them at least three or four times. If you just start calling them in the afternoon, then at least twice. But what, what if I've called them five times? Should I call them a sixth time? Yes. If, if absolutely, if you have time, every hour, every couple of hours, you should give that lead a call, depending on how many yeah. leads you have. If yeah. you don't have a lot of leads, then definitely ever, every two or three hours, folks, you need to be recalling the, those leads again with that. Like I said, 63 times. And the person answered the phone as if I've never tried to call them. 
They've been get, getting um, automated text messages from my CRM, automated emails, plus me calling them that many times. And they answered the phone as if I never tried to call them. Just to let you know, that's what people do. And we all get all hung up in our head like, well, yes. I don't want to make these people upset if I pick up Correct. the phone. Gonna, yeah, they get these calls all day. They don't know what's calling them. They, it's it's they like 10 no other telemarketers calling them. Just do not, the calls. Do hey, not be me. scared to triple dial, folks. Telesales, you have to triple dial. You will not make money if you don't triple dial. I promise you. Frida, tell us how it is. <laughs> David, I just wanted to share something with all the new people. I, I've been in this business a long time, over 10 years, and I've been with David for a while. And he has always had training that you can plug into and get it up and rolling. And it's it just all the, you know, different leads and different things like that. It doesn't matter. You just got to call the people. You're going to make money. The reason why I stay in this business, because I know I can pick up some leads and turn around and make me a quick grand when I need it. Easily. You're going to make money. It's not, and it's not hard. It's not hard. And once you get that script and you get it rolling off your tongue, it's all you got to do is, it's, you know, my son, when he was little, he said, mom, you have the easiest job in the world. Do you want insurance? No. Yes. Okay. Next. <laughs> right. That but it all funny. starts with what? Picking the Make phone up the and not putting the damn phone down. It's, mm -hmm. it's time. It's time on task, y'all. Yep. When I don't that. work, I don't make money. <laughs> but right. when I 100%. do work, I make good money. Right. So, right. yeah, it's, you just got to make the calls. Just don't be scared. Don't let all this other stuff. I, I, I remember when I used to take out a map and take my leads and make out a map and coordinate them and track where I was. I would take 20 leads, track where I was going, get in my car, get, take my food with me. And I would be traveling through Virginia, going from house to house to house to house. No GPS, tell my age, no <laughs> GPS, no computer. We had a rate book and we would calculate the rates by hand. And that's how we did it. And I made top sales, sales, top of the sales chart like three or four times doing it. Nice. So it's not hard. It's not hard. Don't let it scare you. Just get out there and, and jump in, jump in. That's jump in. about that's that's the kind of the overarching message here, isn't it, Frida? It's like you just gotta you just gotta get out there and do it. Yeah, you're gonna get told no. Yeah, not everybody's gonna buy, but just keep it up. The thing is, what we know on the training and recruiting side is that like the person who just keeps going is eventually gonna get it. Because most people, it's not because of some silver bullet or some amazing knowledge. Sure, the script is important, but most people fall short on the work ethic. They just won't put the time on task long enough to get the results. And that's really where, that's how I'm successful. Like there's a lot more people who are smarter than me that know more about this business than me. But the only reason I'm here is I just never quit. I just kept going. I didn't care. I just, I wanted it bad. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 minutes. So much for that 30 minute thing. I keep saying that, then it goes like double the time. <laughs> but Chris, that was excellent. Thanks for taking time to do this with us. And thank you all for being here again. I invite you guys, if you're interested in joining our agency, to check out davidduford.com forward slash FAQ.